Yes. Um, okay. So it's recording. They ever? It's recording. Okay. Make sure. Okay. Uh, oh, they do. They punch out. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, goes on to another agenda. Okay. So we're called to order at six oh nine. There should be a whole lot more farmers sitting in this room right now. I'm sorry, say that again. By the sound of it, there should be a whole lot more farmers yeah. sitting in this room right now. But most people don't know this. We didn't know any of this until it happened. <clears throat> so they just brought us. Yeah. When did but you get out of this? Uh, let's see. It was the end of 2020. And when did they bring the fine back in? Um, they've been talking about it for over a year, but they it just goes on and on. They always are looking for something else. Like with a question. Yes, exactly. It, exactly. And then they have to talk to the legal group, which is somewhere in Washington, D.C. So it just takes right. forever. So it's federal, Wally. Yeah, absolutely. Federal. Okay, but they're applying the Massachusetts yes. rules, part of which came out of the Chang decision. Pretty in a way that all wasn't totally right, that, in a way that wasn't totally clear. I mean, it right. did look like when that came down, like some possible outcomes were either this or somebody getting sued again, the way Chang got sued, in order to clarify. Well, did he get sued or did Department of Labor? I think, um, uh, no, I think workers brought that suit with oh. support. You know, they got legal help. But that's, I, I could be wrong. I definitely um, pretty sure don't remember everything, but I think that's what it was. Uh, okay. We had no complaints against us. Yeah. But they're auditing H2A growers. Mm -hmm. And I think it's because we run the labor camp. Right. So... There's like four H2A farms all together in one place. So we were the first ones to take. Does anybody else know if anybody else has been audited? I was just going to say, are you the only of the yeah, Up to now. Yeah. But I know people in Connecticut who've been audited. I see. And in New York State, too. And is there lack of clarity on overtime rules oh, in, yeah. in Connecticut and New York as well? Um, New York, I think it's 54 hours. Oh, it doesn't matter what you're doing. They started at 60, and each year they're knocking it down an yeah. hour until they get to 40. Yeah. <laughs> so that's, I thought Massachusetts was like, you know, was it 56 or something? Or, or no? We well, had we, talked about we, that. Remember those meetings at yeah, UMass? Yeah. I thought everything was settled. Yeah, same here. <laughs> we were audited three years ago. And with Department of Labor? Yes. Okay. We had that meeting at your place, Wally, a couple of years ago. Nothing materialized from that meeting. No, nothing too far to go. Yeah, but then we went to UMass and had that one. Where was it? Right. Chapel or something? Yeah. Right. Yeah. And it sounded like everything was okay, at least to yeah. me. Yeah. And I didn't want to dig around too much because sometimes the less you know, the better. Right. Yeah. Like, uh, like a, a few weeks there, when the Department of Labor, the Mass Department of Labor, sent out the thing. Talking about this incidental, you know, work, you know, they do. So I don't know if they're, you know, they're just going after the bigger guys, you know, because a little guy like me, what am I going to hire somebody to pack stuff? And, <laughs> well, see, that's the thing. They How can people. you afford? <laughs> and they don't, they don't actually pack it, but we just put it in the cooler, you know, after we wash it. That's still post harvest. Wash it, yeah. It's you know, post harvest. I figure, you know, that's part of the harvest to me. Yeah. <laughs> I understand. Is there, is there an exemption for, for is there a dollar amount? No. No? I know a guy in Connecticut who got nailed. He only has two guys working. Uh -huh. And they nailed him because um, he's got a roadside stand. Yep. And the guys used to carry stuff out to the roadside stand or even put it in a customer's cars. Yeah, bro. That's, that's, it's interesting. Yeah. So do you think Connecticut has the same distinction between post-harvest work and pre-harvest work that Massachusetts has? No, but they are going for anything they can find. So they got him because they were working retail. 
Yeah, uh, right. They weren't supposed right, right, to. Right. right. Oh. Yeah. yeah. They the trust guys me. don't go near the. They're going right. to find something. Right. I don't care who you are and what you're doing. <clears throat> They're going to find something. Well, so the the pay the overtime though. That's what it would come down to. But most of the crops we grow don't justify that. So is the main issue when you're like not compliance that you weren't having people clock in and clock out, and so there was no. Right, we didn't differentiate between packing and just is everybody. It, is, it, is that the only thing you would have had to have done to be in compliance? Well, then we would have to pay overtime for anybody packing, which we weren't doing. Yeah, I didn't think we had to. Well, you don't have to pay overtime if they're in the field. Correct. After until another level. Well, it depends on what they're doing. In this there, there's a reasonably good explanation. You think, Wally? I think so. So it's I don't know, page three or four or five here. If uh, I don't, maybe you could walk us through that. Mm, no, because I understood it a totally different way. These were no. the rules we were going by. Say it again. These were the rules we were going by. These are the rules you were going by. Yeah. And because it, it doesn't mention packaging or packing specifically. Oh, okay. So did they take any uh, check you out for? Uh, uh, you know, uh, the HTO people, everybody, 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 they have to, you know, because at our place, pretty much everybody did everything, and that's going to change this year. Yeah. But, <laughs> yeah, actually, it's going to be a problem having some people just packing and other people not that right? Yeah. But there's a lot of between your helpers. You've got that right. 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 You work the field level front of package this year. Right. Right. Yeah. Everybody has it. Well, that's the clear. Mm -hmm. They get mad. Yeah. You know, they yeah. can't yeah. come in. You know. If you have some cooperation between the farms, then their guys, his boy, they go over to your farm. Your guys, his they'll nail you for that. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, yeah. Guaranteed. They're, 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 they're looking they for that. They will. <laughs> I, they will get you for that. All, but, yeah. but so if, you, if I work, for one farm, and then I go to work for another farm. How can they complain? They can't if the farms don't have anything to do with it. Like right. if you had a job in a candy store that you worked for 39 hours a week, and then right. you went two towns away and had a job in a movie theater that you got on your own. Okay. But if the candy store owner and the movie theater owner make a plan, like I'm going to hire these people for 39 hours, and then you're going to have them for another 20 on your place mm. to avoid overtime. Then you're avoiding the rules and they can get you for that. So if the workers independently get a second job, that's their prerogative. Mm -hmm. But if you make a plan with your neighbor, like mm -hmm. we're going to trade people in order to and circumvent this. And it'll, it'll it'll get you for if, that. if we if we cut our employees down to 40 hours, that's exactly what they're going to do. They're going to go to other farms. They're going to say, hey, and that's good, right? But you just can't push that. Right. And, that's my understanding. And it's I think you've got to be real careful calling another farm and saying, do you need people on Saturday? And then telling your crew, hey, you are, you are we, no more of that. Yeah. And remember, you they talk to the workers. So all you need is oh, one yeah. worker yeah. saying, oh, yeah, we're working on these two farms. Yeah. And it's all over for you. Because yeah. I asked them, I said, well, if we made it a different division just for packing, would everything be good? And they said, absolutely not. I'm assuming the workforce, for the most part, doesn't care about what, you know, about this. Well, like if they're closing a, closing a shed or, you know, they're not thinking, oh, we need to get overtime because we switched from. No, you know. nobody knew when they questioned the right. workers. Right. They're not they're not trying to rat you out. No, they're just. Yeah, I don't think so, because if we cut them down to 40, they're going to be very They're going to be gone. Yeah, mm. the H two A guys aren't going to want to. And where are they going to go? Because right. it's going to be the same everywhere. So the, right. the biggest problem with that is that you landscapers. Can, you can't protect your guys because if it's hot in the middle of the day, right? Now you, exactly. You can't, you can't bring them inside. No, to cool them off. You guys, no. no, you guys got to stay in the field. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. Or punch them in and punch them out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but if they're all the way in. Ashfield, and you're going to bring them <laughs> all the way back to Hadley. And remember, for two gotta hours, you got to pay travel time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Who, who defined what harvest means? Exactly. They the government. They don't know right. shit. That's exactly right. 
You know, how is how is closing and opening and closing a shed not part? Well, that's post harvest. Why? Since who? Because so they say it's post harvest. harvest. Managing a storage. Yeah. 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 Why? Any, any of that. They well, they saying, they define it any way they're saying. Same. That's the problem. Absolutely. Right. Unless it's document, you've got to document everything. But what I'm finding is the more you document, they use that against you too. Mm -hmm. Right. Like if I make hay, so after I'm done with it, I just, I just walk away, just leave it out in the field, gets rained on, gets ruined. But they couldn't care. That, according to the government, that's just that's the end of the that's harvest. Really yeah. That so so is right. uh, putting hay in the barn, packing homes? Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Well, technically, you're yeah. in. Still, right, that's, it's insanity. Yeah, it's stupid. That, that's why we all have to get together. And it can't be just a few people from the valley. It's going to be the whole state. Absolutely. And I think Maura Healy will listen because I was amazed how she listened last year. But before we do this, people have to really carefully think about how we present it to the public without making it look like we're screwing the farm workers. Well, what if what if you did something a little different? And so it, <clears throat> I saw the writing on the wall on this. I said it was too, it was too big, wishy washy. So I said, well, we'll just pay the loan company. You sell your vegetables to the big Y, they get a 60 40 cut where they're getting 60%, we're getting 40%. Why couldn't we talk to the, and and then, I don't know, if you sell to a bunch of supermarket chains, you're going to find a few of them that give you all these extraneous um, fines for doing, you know, if you're waiting, it's 250 or if you miss a delivery, it's a couple hundred bucks, yeah. and, and on and on and on it goes. So why couldn't we talk to the state and say, listen, we can't afford to do this as vegetable growth. Why can't you put a little leverage on the supermarket change to pay us a fair wage? Because now there's the, the, the competition, you know, it's, it's consolidated to the point where there isn't enough competition that you could sell your wear something. And plus the government's got the, uh, 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 a policy of, of, uh, of uh, cheap food prices because, you know, you don't, you don't want to have too little. You have to have too much. Right. You're never going to get paid a fair wage for your, the, the circle is, is continuous now. Well, I People know. are buying it off of the government's money. So you have to go get a grant to be a farmer. And that circle is because just ripping right now. You're, you're never getting away from that. The fundamental problem. Never, problem. Yeah, you're, you're never going to get paid not, a fair dollar. The fundamental here. problem here Food. is that you're not getting paid enough. That's the problem. We're not more enough than, enough than whether the government reason. defines exactly where it's harvest or not. Like right. the fundamental problem is you're not getting paid a reasonable amount to produce the food that everybody needs to eat right. and to pay the workers but that everybody the needs chain to stores eat. will buy it. From other states, from yes, Canada. Right. Canada right. kills us. I agree. Oh, I think every... this would be very hard to do, but we, I do think because we don't recognize we, what the. Remember when we'll safety you know, started, cool. you know, all the stores said, oh, we're going to pay you an extra quarter yeah, a box. Yeah, yeah. The first season, we got it for a couple of months. And then they said, well, everybody's doing it. So yeah. that's gone. Right. Right. Yeah. And it would be the same with this. In New York State, they've got a program where um, if you're a farmer, you can submit your hours. And the state will subsidize the overtime. Right, you get a tax credit. Like in New York, a single right? farmer yeah. who's doing that. Yeah. So I have a buddy who's a large animal vet there. So he deals with huge dairy farms. You know, mm -hmm. guys who milk ten thousand cows. And so the governor pushed that through, and then turned around. The only way she could push it through was to tell those guys that then you submit your hours, and we're going to pay you, we're going to subsidize it and give it back to you, and we're going to tax you on it. So they're taxing it on the way out, oh. and then they're taxing it on the so way back in. They give you the money to pay the difference in your hours. At the end of the year, they give you a tax credit, income. just right. like the dairy guys yeah, get yeah. here. They're going to get a tax credit on overtime, which is then but taxed on tax the farmer again. As income. Yep. And if you don't make money, you don't get anything. Right. I mean, it's I, literally I insanity. It, and they said the paperwork is the kind of thing that you could take to the, to to the, the here yeah. and say, yeah. like, we want a system like this. Right. 
but we but we got to learn from New York and do it better because right. that's crazy. Crazy, right? exactly. Uh, it's something that they just slammed it through right. and to make everybody swallow it. They said, "Oh well, we'll just pay at the end." <laughs> huh. Yes, Tim. So do you, do you go to Big Y at the beginning of the season or in July, June or July, and say, uh, uh, let's negotiate a price for, for about enough this year? We do it after we started harvesting, because until I see what we're getting for a yield, we really can't talk price. Right. But, right. So, but here's the thing. it's OK, let's say I'm just picking numbers. Let's say we say we're going to go with $10. Well, if the price goes up to 12, they're going to take every box we can give them at $10. <laughs> but if the price goes to eight, they're going to say, well, you know what? This stuff really isn't moving. And they're going to be bringing it as fast as they can from other people. And it's not just big wide stop and shop. I'll do it. Every chain you sell to will do it. I've always thought that we should come together. And if Massachusetts is producing the product, they have to buy that product first. I disagree. That's the way it should be. If we have farms in production in that season. These stores must buy from this state. And if they cannot, or if, if the farmers want to sell it to them, they have to, to, to take it in. And they have to pay a certain fee for that, right? But that money goes into a different account for us, for disasters and stuff, such as this. Even. That's where it needs to start. If this state is in production, if New England's in production, why is Canada coming into this state? Because that hurts my collar to kill. Wicked. It hurts Wicked. all of our stuff. Too. And yeah. it's not right. That's where it needs to start. You want to start paying overtime and stuff? Great. This is how we start making more money. Or have a tariff. Or, or exactly. Could we pay in Canadian dollars? Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably worth more than a dollar. Yeah. So, um, so I'm like big why they'll 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 use the, the local label right well if there should be some if you're going to use the local label then you're going to buy it should be local stuff and and uh but if you tie it into the massachusetts drone and pressure which has a pretty good following i would say right you agree I, but it's not like it used to be i don't yeah, I'm glad you brought that up because I deal with this with the beef all the time. They just say everything is local. Mm -hmm. Not to throw yeah. a certain place under the bus, but uh, River Valley Market sells local beef who they buy from Wheeler Farm. But say they move 10 animals a week. That that infrastructure to produce 10 animals a week does not exist at Wheeler Farm. doesn't exist at me. If I combine with Josh Porter and two of the other biggest beef producers around here, but they just put the sign up and no one reads anything or no one cares, really. Right. Most people think that the grocery store has a little plot of land out back and that's where all the food comes from. <laughs> I you're mean, not really. Wrong. You're not wrong about that at all. So there's no, there's absolutely zero regulation for them to put a local sign up and have two things of beef right in the same case and just, oh, is that local? Sure. You know, there's nobody like right. really... Like you can go to your little butcher shop like Corsello or Sutter Meats or whatever, and they're going to tell you really where it's coming from. But even those places, they're still buying from Mike Austin in Belchertown, who just buys loads of animals from PA, and then they're here for a little while. You know, so like there's no who's actually like looking into it. Nobody. So if he's, you know, if your butternut squash is sitting next to a butternut squash from Canada and there's a sign that says local. Like there's nothing that says, oh, there has to be a wall between them or right. better signage. It's just, it's all right there. Oh, stop. this one's cheaper. And it says organic somewhere along this back thing <laughs> where all yeah. this organic stuff is. I'm just going to buy it. It's true. You know, just go to Big Y. That's how all the berries are. They're all, everything's all right there. So unless you're really paying attention, I mean, they're pulling the and, wool yeah. of your eye. Well, one of the stop and shop drivers brought us a sign that said Plainville Farm, long green cucumbers. And this was in January. <laughs> and they still had it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, good story. I mean, what does local mean to you? That's the problem. They just put, you know, like they River Valley there. gets a lot of meat from Maine. I mean, it's not that bad. It's yeah. Maine. They're not that far away. That's a lot better than most places do. But to me, local is down the road. Mm -hmm. You know, like I'm in Waitley, but they don't buy meat from Maine. 
they buy it from me and put a put their local sign on. I think that's how we have to treat this overtime thing. It's not that we don't want to pay our employees. Believe me, that's not that. It's we can't afford to, right? That's the problem. That's the issue that needs to be addressed. Without a doubt. And we're losing, everybody will lose sight of that. Like you said, if we go public with this, like, oh, cheap farmers, they don't want to pay the blah, blah, blah. Right. And that's not the case. Those well, because they go to the store and the prices are high. Right. Yeah. So they just assume. They think, yeah, we're rich. So, you know, if, if, I think if we were to educate the general public and say, hey, Big Y gets $60 for every $40 that I get. Yeah. Uh, no, wait a minute. I'm sorry. Four, Big yeah. Y gets $120. Yeah, that's yeah. right. right. Yes. $40 <laughs> I get. So if I sell, if I sell a bag, I, I had a discussion with him today. <laughs> I said, you know, you raise your retail up to four dollars a pound, Carson's, and we sell to you for thirty-two dollars a bag. There's eighteen in a bag at seventy-two dollars, <laughs> and and you guys are making like crazy money. Yeah, but the public assumes we're the ones doing that, right? Yeah. You know what I'd love when when they break it down, they have the price and then a price per ounce so you can compare the different stuff. Yeah. I'd love to see the price they paid. The wholesale yeah. price. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. Oh my gosh. Right. Oh man. People would be shocked. Oh, you, you, gorilla you, uh, supermarket signage. signage. <laughs> yeah. Maybe, maybe you can put some, some pressure on the legislature. Those guys seem like they like us and they want to keep us in business. Just to go to the supermarket chains and say, hey, you got to play fair. Well, have you been paying overtime since the change? Is that what yeah. you said? Yeah. For everybody or just a packing group? For everybody. Really? And it's, it's, it, uh, it means that the guys don't really work all that much. And sometimes you have to go. And yeah. so, and then I, I kind of look at it and say, you know, I really like these people. I'm glad I'm giving them this money, but we're not making it. Right. Well, that's it. It's like I get that. We don't. Right. Not pay. We're going in the hole because we're Indeed. Have Have you changed sort of the crops that you grow or or anything on your farm because of because of the fact that you're paying overtime, growing less crops or whatever? Oh, uh, um, we kind of do the same. Yeah. Do you have more people though? If you're trying to hold them around. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you have more people. And that that that's an inefficiency in itself, because when you move a crew, you move sixteen guys. You know, you have to right. pay that sixteen guys to take the ride over. Right. <laughs> yeah. the result, Seventy-eight guys. Mm -hmm. yeah. Are you charging okay? overtime on over eight hours or just forty hours a week? Forty hours a week. Not eight hours a day. No. So you could go four ten hour days. But, but then, they don't want that. They want yeah. to work seven days a week. Exactly. Because they're not here to hang out and watch yeah. our tunes. And we don't have access to enough good people right. to be able to do that. I mean, we could get people, but I'm talking good people. Right. You're just not going to. Yeah. Not going to get. Yeah. And you're not going to get some 16 year old kid from Amherst or you're going to get in trouble. If you get a 16 year old kid, probably. Yeah, but whatever, you're not yeah. going to get any you're, type you're of right. that doesn't exist anymore. Plus, when the weather's right, you got to push it. Sure. You can't say, well, I'm going to yeah. cut them off at 40 when there's a good weekend coming up and it might rain all the next week. Yeah. Right. And again, they when it rains next week, you got to find something for them to do or they're going to be gone. Hey, there you go. And most of these people aren't here 12 months a year. No. Right. Yeah. I think our best, one of our better arguments would be we've got seven months to do 12 months worth of work. Yeah. Which is a fact. Absolutely. I think it's and fun. They want to make 12 months worth of pay in, in seven pay. months. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I just, I can see that it's political suicide for anybody to be against overtime pay for farm workers. Right. That's just the reality. Yeah. But right. we're not the only industry. There really is. I think yeah. hotels and restaurants. Um, the the cranberry lawyer had a list, and it was very impressive. Fisheries, I think. Yeah, yeah. Maybe logging. So we got to stop saying we're we're not against it. We're just not. We can't afford it. Right. That's the bottom line. Yeah. And who I would attack? Who defined what harvest? Right. I would attack that because that right there is. What farmer decided that? That's a I mean, nobody. No, that, it's just, that's ins that's so, an insanity to me. Throw that, that out. Harvest stops once you're out of the field. And Chang Farm is not, in my opinion, mm -mm. a regular farm. No, that's they even grow anything anymore. That's, that's a warehouse. Yeah, it's more controlled. 
Absolutely. Without Absolutely. a doubt. But that is how you grow bean sprouts. Right. Right. It's True. not like Grandpa Chang used to grow them outside. Right. And bad people started growing them inside. That is how you grow that crop. And it, it is a vegetable. Right. It just happens to be inside. Like, like a green right. rice. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> right. you know, right. or I mean, there's another blurred line. You harvest something from in a greenhouse. Yeah, that's. You can <laughs> grow tomatoes outside. Yeah. You can grow them inside. So, I mean, we can say what we want about any other individual farm, but coming for the rest of us. Mm. So but the rules just... were based on what I would say is not a regular farm. Yeah. Yeah. Or a, a single, you know, a unique farm. Right. Yeah. Fair enough. Right. That's a good way. Right. They're trying to broad stroke. Yeah. Right. But that is, that is, that's because that, was the case that was before them. And that's how the legal system works. Like mm -hmm. somebody brings a case and they are dealing with the what they have. And so I, I don't I don't know how hard it would be to change those definitions. I mean, that's kind of one of the fundamental things about regulating anything is that you have to write definitions and they never apply in a way that seems fair to every situation because there's always too much granularity and detail and difference. Um, I do think that the state is very interested in supporting farmers. I think disasters are an easier um, sell than not paying overtime to the people who are the poorest people in the system. Like farmers don't make enough money, but workers make a lot less. So I I think that's going to be a hard sell at the state level unless it, unless there is some trade off. Like I, I think, think if there was. Clarity, right. I think, is great to the extent that you can get it. Um, but I think it's going to be easier to make a case for some relief from the state if it comes, if there is some like trading. So there's something that workers want that you're suggesting get given to them, ideally with support from the state in the right. form of money into your pockets that you can turn around and you know pay yeah. people more in a way that isn't taking in right because like you're never going to give you know trying um, to get a fair that, price for your crop is a, a hundred year battle like yeah, yeah that's, I think that's a battle worth fighting but i do think that's a long right a like long, educating the general uh, public is uh, i mean it's painstakingly yeah. slow mm -hmm. and we after the chang decision before this you know ruling came out Alan, I think you were coming. We did have a series of meetings to try to see if there was some compromise position around overtime. And then when this, you know, decision came out, it, it that this, ex, you know, explanation of the rules was sort of eliminated any um, reason for farmers to participate, like do any trading off, because it mostly said you can keep doing what you're doing. Um, and the problem with that, I think, was that it could be interpreted as not really matching what the Chang decision said. And so it did seem like it was potentially an opening for a lawsuit, which, you know, so far hasn't happened, except for what's happening to you, which I, I agree. So, you know, it seems totally unfair to be like, I'm following what you said. And yet, you know, you're slamming me for it. And they're going to do whatever they want anyway. Yeah. yeah. That's the problem. Yeah. But I think it's. We're going to fight it. Good. And they have we all should lose. Right. But there's a lot more power in a lot of people. Absolutely. Right. Speaking up about I this. agree 100%. <clears throat> Wally, were you the only one that was singled out? Or are there other farms? Oh, there's there? probably other farms. Oh, okay. But we're in a position in my age and stuff where I've got nothing to lose right. by fighting this. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I, I hear you. <laughs> And I assume you can't just you can't pay it. Yeah, you just go well, out of business. It's, it's, I'd have to sell a lot of land to pay. Yeah. They would but they would look at your books and say, well, you can't really afford this. So we'll they don't look at it. No, so. they don't. They will bring in because I said that. I said you can look at our tax returns and yeah, see that we couldn't pay this in 20 years. Right. He said, that's okay. We have a forensic accountant. Oh, and they will. If you want their help, they will come in uh -huh. and look at everything you have, and they will find ways to oh, do it. Sure. Yeah. So I said, find that offer. 
Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Oh, for, forensics is right. I was going to say, does, does he bring a rubber glove at least? <laughs> That'd be the least of the problem. Yeah. yeah. Wow. You have to say yeah. the words, Chris Schultz. He's our attorney. He's this. your attorney. Yeah. Do you bring up that? He doesn't want to make too many waves because he works with the Department of Labor across the country all the time. Oh. That's his job. You could be the sacrificial lamb. Well, I don't know. I'd like him to be more aggressive. Yeah. yeah. So we're going to see how it goes. Yeah. Hmm. What's the time, uh, about dead time for your pain? The weird thing is, Tim, they, they tell us stuff and then they disappear for months at a time. Yeah. And then they just pop up again. So the last I heard, he said three years. <laughs> You have three years to pay that amount. Yes, but they haven't finalized. They won't put anything in writing. They won't write down our violations. Mm. Wow. They won't tell us how to proceed in the future. They won't write down anything. That's well, right. they get right mm -hmm. violations. They don't know. That should be written down. So, mm. so they don't. But they, 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 won't do that. they won't do. That. You know what if I mean, I don't know what organization could do this, but what about sue the state? All the farmers get together and sue the state for for I don't a lawyer could come up with a reason why. Is it the state or the feds? Well, it's, it's, it's federal. It's very confusing. No lack of clarity on the overtime issue. Right. Yeah. Yeah, you could. And but who invented harvesting? Definition. Yeah. Like, I, but do you think that would help us? I, you control the narrative. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what it would yield. It's, but it's a different way to think about it. So, Wally, your attorney doesn't take a position on the, the, these. What you broke isn't written down. And yeah, and they aren't doing anything. They're just. I would. I would keep pursuing that. And that's what we are. But you can't push these folks. I couldn't help no, with sleeping dogs and let them lie. Maybe yeah. it would just go away. It's not going to go. It's not going to go. They just gonna up go. here and tell you you have two years now. Yeah, yeah exactly. exactly. He's changed their mind. It's not going to go away. And I think we're the first, but they said they were going to be laser focused on H2A growers. Oh. And when they finish H2A growers, they will just move on. They're looking for revenue. Yeah, we need to make this just yeah. as hard for them as it is for us. Yeah. Because eye for an eye. You know what I mean? But it's it's just, it's expensive. Yeah, it is. <laughs> I mean, either way, it's expensive. Yeah, and the government usually have eyes like people do. <laughs> like, who are you? Stabbing, you know. What year did they look at? Was it 2020? They looked at the end of 20, the 21, and 22. Okay, so it was three years? Three, two, two and a half work yeah. years. Yeah. And even when they were talking to employees, people have trouble remembering yeah. going back that far. Right. Yeah. 20 was the COVID year, though, right? So it was yeah. a lot of work. But still, use that <laughs> right. Twenty was one of our better years. Mm -hmm. Too, with Gail Stork. Yeah, and well, then remember all those food banks were buying everything. Yeah, even the number twos flew off. Yeah, you know, you think they want to start working with us because we all see what's going on in Europe. Well, food is cheap here. It doesn't have to be. Yeah, I know, but. You know, people forget and they think it's expensive. The but, government's been subsidizing. Right, since FDR right. made food cheap. So, so <clears throat> think about it, and 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 approach this, you know, civilly first, and see where it gets us. Could be worse. We could be sitting at home. <clears throat> see what they're, they're trying to take all the farmers' land away. You know, right. Yeah. Hmm. Don't think it can't happen here. Yeah. Right? If we yeah. don't, because. They too much. They're, they're worried about the runoff for, for nitrogen. And right. So they want. They're trying to do a buyback when they buy all the farmers' land. Seriously, that would work. And don't crop it. In the Midwest, yeah. Yeah. they're having all the farmers raise for uh, cover crop for rye because that's the big way to absorb the carbon out of the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, then what do we do with the climate plants? Plowed under. Like, <laughs> Does it make sense? What do you think? Mm -hmm. Potential is a big thing. Thousands of dollars of acres that are paying people out there to mm -hmm. cover crop their field and put what I think you're in a carpet or input it out of the air. 
So how can they take your land for a night you can get it? You know. <clears throat> well, one one of the things I will say is that what's enabled us to do this is the is the the payroll system of checking people in and out of different projects, and it's uh, so all the all the knobs for your little computer are on this board, or punch in, punch out, and the different jobs by the number, mm -hmm. and and then that reports back to the general ledger. So that data is already there as an, as an accumulative thing throughout the week. So you have a system in place where each, everybody who works there at the end of the week, you know what they did during each of the hours that they're working. Yeah. Of course, a guy working in the greenhouse is going to be working in the greenhouse <laughs> period. But in, in the case of uh, of uh, packing house crew, who sometimes goes to the field to do some weeding in the strawberries. Mm -hmm. Well, they're punched out, and then they they on and and they, and they the supervise and carry this board around in this pickup truck. So he can he can do it right then, right now, and uh, but uh, we've had that for a while, just because of controlling this information, but. I see. The custom the company's out of California. Uh, but uh, if you uh, contacted uh, Bob or someone down there, they they could give you the name of the people, but it's it does work. I see. So Tim, when you what happened, what was your experience when you got audited? Well, all our Jamaicans work in the field. Mm -hmm. So um and that's and they were really looking at your H two A people. No, oh, they they were they they, they spent a lot of time there, uh, but they were concentrating on the H two A. And there's a couple of things that, uh, you know, the exit fee, the, the buck thirty, you no, know, how many dollars the day they leave, mm -hmm. or some goddamn thing. But but we uh, they found something came out pretty unscathed considering how you could. Yeah, screwed up. And do you have some people who do reach the overtime threshold on their packing time, and then you pay them overtime? Yes. Or, okay. Oh, yeah. Right. Since the Chang thing, because right. That's what those people do all winter. Right. No. And yeah. uh, but we just kind of manage. We don't. We don't have to go over forty because we we're packing in November and packing all that stuff we can. Then then we have to January. It goes back to 40 until mm -hmm. you have to go up again. You know? Right. <clears throat> Wally, this is a federal audit. Have you gotten any support or assistance from either Congress or Senate? Yeah, my governor's office talked to them, and they said they wouldn't discuss it with them because it's an ongoing investigation. Mm -hmm. Wow, uh, or it's an easy way out. See, yeah, he must have some way that he uh, he can get around that, though. You know, everything. But, well, yeah, if the the parameters of the audit, they won't even tell you that, right? And yeah, they don't have any description right. of what you did wrong. It's like, yeah, we can't tell you because we're we're in the middle of it. But in the middle that's of what? Cost you a lot of money. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly where right. you stand. Here. And and they will not tell you in writing how to proceed in the future. No, because they don't know. Right, they're they're making this up as they go. I think that, doing. that seems to be if they're if they're the finding something, them. they should at least tell you what the violation. You've got to know that fining. Yes, right. Which is why we haven't actually been fined yet. Okay, and they haven't written down. Um, they were charging us overtime for Victor <laughs> when he was working for you because he helps us for a few months. Yeah, with her. yeah. They put him down for overtime for the year. And I said, look, he didn't even work here. <laughs> this is what I'm saying. They're making it up as they, they, <laughs> they are. So but it's, it's, it's hard to fight a moving target like that. Yeah, right. But you can't. You got to have your... Be See, fight. because we don't have everything documented, that, that is the it's just their word against yours. Yeah, and point. whose word are they going to take? Right. But we don't even know what to document. 
Well, that's it. When you open the door and close the door to the shed, is that post office? Not to me. I, I'm thinking they would call it that. Yeah. Well, they've got to have definitions for that as to what's field work and what's right. Right, but see, I wouldn't call stripping tobacco packing. No, no. You're just getting it ready to deliver. That's part of the harvest. But if they call it post harvest, it is post harvest. It's the harvest. Yeah, right. You're harvesting I'm, the leaves, just the stalks. Right. It's a, putting it's, tobacco in the barn is just the beginning of the harvest. Stripping and putting the bundle is the end of the harvest. I'm going to remember that. Thing. I'd argue that but squash is the same thing. If you're peeling squash and chopping it, and packaging it, that's still, once it's packaged, then it's harvest is over, no? Well, I would say packing squash into boxes, that's what I tried to tell them. We're just putting it in boxes so we can sell it. Right. right. We're not changing its form. Right. I'm not gonna fight them on the peeling. Yeah, I think that's- But that's a very it. small part of the business. But and how is it different than stripping tobacco? And it, well, it's the, the squash comes I, in, like I I get it, but what like again, like where is the line here? But I think you have to give something. You're not. Gonna... I mean, sure, but so I'll get nappy because quite honestly, after Christmas we don't really work more than forty hours a sure. week. Sure. So all this winter, that's it's been fine. Less than forty. Yeah. So fine, I'll go yeah. with that. And the guys are happy to get forty. <laughs> but we don't even. It's more like thirty-five. Right. And they're they're happy to get that. They're still better at collecting unemployment. Right. I just can't see them. I mean, I know it's like the federal government, but I just can't see them. If you try and fight them, I can't see them actually having a rock to stand on because there are no rules in place like that. You kind of both have that right. on your side, and you both have that as a disadvantage. They don't have anything that don't exist. You know, mm. like what are they fighting you on? They don't even know. So, like, how can yeah. they even how like, how can they have a rock right. to stand on? But you they know? base like, the fine on something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. An assumption I'm, I'm, that was made, right. and some of it seems yes that they won't tell you defend, about. Defend not yet. Yeah. No, they <laughs> but they talked to employees. We got a printout of all the overtime, and so I went through it employee by employee, and a lot of it is just it's just bogus. But right. I can't say that they weren't hacking at that time, or they didn't pack that week. The odds are strong that they didn't. But right. I can't swear on a Bible that they didn't. Not that they're. But they people. can't prove that they. No, they but can't prove it any better than you can. That's exactly right. Yeah, seems pretty thin. So non-existent. Yeah. Are, are, is this the feds enforcing Massachusetts general law? Yeah. Right, this is so this it's is the feds, right, but it's right. state law. Right. Yeah. So yeah. it's kind of a hybrid between the two. And the state can't just tell them go away. Sure, they can. So that that State would be Trump my federal, right? Well, this is what we're fighting about. Yeah, like on the border in Texas, right? <laughs> right. There's a lot of uncertainty about that. States, <laughs> but are um, independent. But here's well, what they I told us: if, back, if we true. didn't, we, I signed a paper saying that I acknowledge what they're auditing because otherwise they wouldn't let us get our Jamaican through this coming year. <laughs> right. State and what? And one of the finer points is they're auditing 2020. So they're going back in time and looking. So Massachusetts general law, unless you want to make it retroactive back to 20, whatever laws were on the book would be applied to this. Well Chang was before 20. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it was yeah. Seven. Well, pre COVID, yeah, 17, I think you're right. Oh, 19. Oh, 19 yeah. it says right. it's however old the Massachusetts general law for that topic is. Yeah. 17. Yeah. What's for the change? Yeah. Or, okay. or yeah. for anything. If it's federal enforcement of Massachusetts general law, it, God knows how far it goes back or what the statute is. Yeah. yeah, I think the Massachusetts overtime statute was written in the 60s. And they, you know, in the Chang decision, they said that has been misinterpreted since then. <laughs> so they can, you know, they can make that ruling. Make who said that? Who actually the made the Chang decision? I think it was the mm -hmm. Massachusetts mm -hmm. Supreme Judicial Court. Yeah, it's it's Mass yeah. yeah. Then, then the Labor Department clarified it, supposedly. <laughs> right. And and that's what yeah. we have here. But I, right. I think but it's it, not clear. But they don't have yeah, a Well, or, and it, or it's clearer. I think it is clearer. Yeah. Yeah. 
I think, I mean, what the problem that I saw when this came out was it didn't seem to me that it really matched what they had said in Chang, which seemed to me that it left you all open for a lawsuit for somebody to say, like, this ruling, this guidance doesn't actually match the legal decision. But that's not really what happened to you. Like, this isn't a lawsuit. This is the federal Department of right. Labor. So if, so, you know, where that comes from, my guess is it doesn't come from them thinking like this ruling by the State Division of Labor, Labor Standards doesn't match the Supreme Judicial Court ruling, because I just don't think they're that much in the weeds with Massachusetts law. So I think you're probably right. I mean, I'm sure I expect you are right that it's it's scrutiny of H2A, maybe. Uh, they really dislike H2A. It's totally obvious. Yeah. 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 Find, yeah. They're yeah. not trying yeah. to find work for all the migrants. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think there's a lot of different perspectives on that. But I, one reason I, I think they they can take advantage of HUA growers is we sign all these papers agreeing to all these rules, most of which I probably don't even understand. And I just signed the paper because we need the guys. And uh, yeah, you know, it's uh, I can see there's. We talk about consolidation and supermarket chains and stuff like that, which has been very dramatic over the last 30 years. But, you know, this is just more infrastructure that needs to be on some pretty small farms. Right. And it's not scaled up and it's right. not efficient, you know. Mm -hmm. And, you know. Right. Because it, that's it's just one more barrier. Yeah. Yeah. Especially, yeah, it's like the food safety stuff. Like, right, it's things that it's another hurdle right. you got to clear. Don't make sense. Yeah. One scale. size fits all. Yeah. Yeah. But the good thing about food safety is that was as much education as it was regulation. Because yeah. if they came to me and said, "Okay, yeah. you haven't been following the rules right. that we want you to follow," and said, "From this point forward, do this. that would have been yeah, yeah. okay." I agree. Have right. a separate packing yeah. and all that. But to go back. When we thought we were complying, and tell us we weren't. Yeah, I agree. It's a very different approach. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And when it's confusing, you know, you'd like them. And you always look down a bread side. At least I do. <laughs> Famously. <laughs> yeah. Well, I appreciate you coming in. No problem. I just hope you none of you see this because it's not fun. But I really believe we all have to get together. But as soon as possible, the entire state, even so, like this April. So uh, something else that was on, I just wanted to bring up as an item that we discussed tonight was I know Farm Bureau is screaming mm -hmm. for people to go to meetings. Mm -hmm. I think they had three straight meetings. They didn't get a quorum. Wow. And I'm, this is an election. <laughs> I don't get the Farm Bureau meetings either. Um, but I, you think Farm Bureau is the entity to... I don't, believe, the, I don't believe that the horsepower with uh, what's his name leaving. They don't. Uh, when I was in, that was the executive secretary left maybe a year or so. Doug, two. Doug, Doug, Doug Gillespie. Doug, Doug, uh, Doug Gillespie. No, he no, older no, than no, that. No, He's no, further no. back yeah, than the that. one after Doug. Yeah, he, he was with the Mass Department of Pesticides. Brad. Brad. Yeah, Brad Mitchell. Yes. So the, they don't. The, they haven't replaced Brad with that same equivalent kind of a person. Who, when, when this first came out with Chang, it was it was Brad that yeah we had the meeting yep. down at the farm with all these different people saying yeah we we're going to do all this stuff but yeah it doesn't do it no one does anything but um, it, it's really a toss up it's almost like. Um, going and having a meeting with the attorney general, this is what comes on the hill, right? The attorney general is kind of, and explaining this to someone like that, and instead of how we're putting put, put over the barrel. And uh, because it's, there's just no strength these days. And uh, even the New England dairy and vegetable growers, I mean, they, they Back in the 70s and 80s, they were very active and had a lot going on, but that's because you take that group, how many of them are shippers? Mm, right. You know what I mean? It's all the home, it's all the focused on 
on your garden center sale, or your not garden center, your retail sale, retail sale, farm, stand, yeah. farm stand, and uh, so it's almost like uh, all the shippers out here in the valley. It's the valley group, maybe getting someone like Calabrese and uh, uh, Jackie. Jackie, yeah, those some of those people involved. Um, who could comprehend mm -hmm. this and have enough geographical area to it isn't all in one point, you know, kind of thing. Sure. But I'm almost thinking it should be every every <laughs> section of the state because the cranberry growers are really sensitive to this. Yeah, they are. Yes. They, and they have a Tough really market. good attorney and they have a strong organization. So, so when you're harvesting cranberries, even if you're floating them and pumping them, they they go to the ocean spray and then they're processed, right? Right, but some people pack some of their own. But during harvest, they work a lot of overtime. They have a short window of time. Yes, that's right. And they really, they don't want to pay overtime or they can't pay yeah, overtime. Same. Remember, it's cheap now. Go out of business. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so they can't be paying overtime. So, but if, if, if they're harvesting them, why do they have to pay overtime? Because it's more than forty, and well, don't because those same people are working later doing post harvest work. Oh, okay, cleaning, sure, machines, yeah, everything. Yeah. A lot of them pack on their own. Yes, they sell plenty of ocean spray, but it's just like us. We'd much prefer to pack it ourselves than sell it to somebody else who's going to pack it, because then that's another piece gone. Yeah, right. right. <clears throat> Do you think you could get CESA? To put something together to gather up everybody or you know in the valley to sign something to send to the governor Here's like put make them do the legwork i mean that's kind of what they're i tried talking to phil about it and he is very very not interested in this because the they donors that it. they have don't want to hear that the farmers aren't paying overtime right he, he, he really can't do much. He's in a tough spot. I wouldn't describe it with my CISA hat on. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, slightly differently, although I, I don't disagree with that. But I think, um, I, we, you know, we, after the Chang decision, we felt like farmers were in a very, like, difficult position. Like, you could not start paying people overtime at 40 hours and make it on our farms. And that has only gotten worse since 2019 or whenever it was like with the pandemic and the weather and the prices for everything like that's only yes and the, yes, and the, and the labor costs right. yeah um but i think i i mean i'll say again i think it's going to re be really difficult i think it is not going to be the same as getting 20 million dollars for disaster release in the right. summer i think at the state level there are it's an urban state <laughs> there are a lot of people who are going to be be concerned about what workers get paid. And so I think the approach of figuring out some way that you're there is some trade-off, there is something that workers are getting. And I think, you know, it could be a real question about where is the overtime threshold? Like it doesn't have to be at 40 hours. It could right. be higher. In New York, they're they're easing it down, but you could put it someplace higher. Um and, you know, begin, and ideally there would be a tax credit, there would be a way that you're getting some relief to make it possible. Yeah, um, and I think at CISA, we would be very interested in participating in discussions of that and trying to like bring the various parties together and talk about, you know, where is like the compromise and the trade-off. Yeah. And we are really interested in communicating to the public about like- Why? Complicate, right. yeah, why? Yeah. Why it doesn't work. That's what I was thinking more of um, like public yeah. relations side yeah. of the whole thing is yeah. to have CISA, who, like yeah. you said, has members who are not farmers or has people donating who are not farmers, but follow it religiously. And say, you know, this, is, like, why this, is, yeah, this is why we can't, this is what's going on. This is why this is vague. It makes no sense. Right. We need like and, a farmer friendly PR campaign to like right. let everybody know like farmers aren't making money either. Yeah. Right. right. I mean, right. just drive around, look at farms. <laughs> you know, this is a 10 year, a, a 10 year run. Ten years ago, we made money. Yeah. Ten years ago, you could make a living from what you were doing. 
for maybe 12 years. <laughs> no. But it was good help was reading the Oh, you're living in it. It's the price of the one of the prices were consistently good to the place where you could where you could make a dollar. How much did it go up in 10 years? Uh, well, the course, the course is the cost of doing business is has, has escalated faster. Yes. Yes. Than what you're going to get. And all the rest of this. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then, yeah. And then the, the computer system that the, the supermarket chains have so they can all link it together and find out that somebody out of Idaho has got a cheaper price than you do. Well, that's exactly. <laughs> and, and you don't talk to the buyer anymore on the telephone because no. they, they just send you over an email. But I think another thing we could stress is Massachusetts is the only state with these rules. Yet we compete against all 50 states. And actually we compete against the world. Right. So how yeah. can the farmers in Mass be singled out with these silly rules? And they really are silly rules. And their cost of doing business is higher than anywhere. So like already. Yeah. More than yeah, right. Right. commerce right. problem. So, so but once the legislature and say, hey, you guys put these rules up, you, know, you got to pay us a little premium. Give us a little premium. Give well, better yet, if they could just get the rules, the roll back. I mean, the Supreme Court put these rules in place. Mm -hmm. Would you? Would well, you they, like? Would you like to be, have the ability to pay your people as much money as you can? Absolutely. I, I'm afraid it would be just like the food safety, where they say, "Oh, don't worry, you're going to get paid for doing this." Then we did it with the milk milk support prices. But hey, up in Canada, they have a, a little deal where it says where where they get, "Hey, you, you've used." X amount of kilowatts of electricity. Now we're going to give this to you for free, and we're going to give this to you for free. <clears throat> so you would think that the legislature, could, you could say to the legislature, "Listen, we need help to pay our people. We want to pay them as much as we can. You guys need to chip in." You there want is to a, do these laws? You need you, you you need to help us. Yeah. There's a very farm friendly and very smart Western Mass legislative delegation, but they also are going to want there to be, you know, something in it for workers too, some improvement for workers. I think the best thing in the world. But Joe Comerford and Natalie Blay, like they are, they want to make this work for you all. Right. Uh, and they're they are smart about how legislation and regulations can be crafted in an important way for sure about like what can government do and what can government not do. I mean. Um, don't they have a legacy on the person? That's not my fault. I think it's Wally. I think that's your fault. Oh, <laughs> yeah. it keeps messy. It's just, it's just, it's just juicy. Don't worry about it. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> But don't they have a liaison for agriculture in Western Mass? I thought. Yeah, there is a new um, rural, a rural person. Uh, you picture her, but I can't. Uh, I saw her at one of the flood meetings. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, she would be another good person to bring in. Maybe that would be a person to start oh. with. Yep. Margaret, do you have um, any, or anybody, do you have any like, ideas or suggestions on <clears throat> what would be like a reasonable offering for farm workers to like, make something like that work? I guess my take is an, an overtime threshold that's well over 40 hours. I, I think it. I think 55 that's is a good place. I think 55 yeah. is really doable. I think 60, when we were talking about this, in 2019, 60 was a hard pill for it just sounds for worse. workers to swallow. Yeah. Like that's a lot of hours in a week, um, <laughs> as you all know. Um, <laughs> um, getting rid of the ag minimum wage, which people love to wave in the air and say the ag minimum wage is only seven and a quarter or eight dollars or whatever it is. When there's, there's, I, only, there's only I, one. I know. Pays yeah, I know. But it's not it's not the ag minimum wage is a good bargaining chip because nobody's paying it, but it people like to make a lot of noise about it and it looks bad. And so it's sort of no skin off anybody's back to to, to throw change that in, it. To change that. You're already all paying more. Right. So that I mean yeah. that's where I would start and try to figure out a way that some of that money at over 55 hours is coming back into your pockets. And the, the other reason the 55 is, a, I think, a good threshold is you all are right. There's a lot of people who don't want to get cut back in 40 hours. But there isn't unanimity, I don't think, in the... Well, there never the, is, among, right? right? there never is, exactly, right. among people. And so there's workers who are like, we want overtime. And there's other workers who are like, we do not, we cannot afford to live on 40 hours a week. And so we need more hours. So that's... I, the other reason why have I you ever had an employee come up to you and say I'm upset because you're not paying me overtime? No, me neither. But they do want the hours, right? Right, right. I hear that all the yeah. time. Yeah, 
But, but they're not saying pay me overtime rate. Because except for Tim and I think Shmirovsky's and Hugh, not many people pay overtime, so they don't expect that. Right. right. Here's the thing I've learned. Farm workers have a great find that's incredible. Yes. When the wage rate goes up, they know before I do. Yes. No <laughs> yes. It, yes. It is amazing. They know what every farmer is paying, paying. in the whole valley. In Connecticut. Aaron, <laughs> you said it. Yes. So there's no secrets from, from them no. at all. Now, matter of fact, one reason we get some good workers is we've got the hours. Right. And if you looked at their W-2s, you'd say, holy smokes. These folks are doing well, and they are doing well. Oh, I know. <laughs> yeah, I think all of us know how much they care. Yeah. More than I do. Yeah. Well, if this is a starting point, what's the next step? Yeah, I don't know. I think we have all CISA now and start putting stuff out. Maybe even if they just give advice right. on... What what would everybody in here think about um, if we compromise with a overtime rate going up to a certain hour? What what would everybody feel comfortable doing? Would 56, 55, 50, 40, 48? I would say 50. Yeah, I wouldn't go to 48 to start with because yeah, they're gonna, this they're is gonna gonna big bargaining. You know, yeah. yeah, right. So if we remember New York started with do, I think almost 60. I think it was 60 yeah. and, and then it, it went to 56. Get down, uh, it's going to be 54, 56. California. It goes down the same thing. thing. I think they yeah. I think there are six states that have agricultural overtime one way or another now. Yeah. And, and it's going, you know, it's inching up, not very fast, but um, But in California, when they put the overtime in, almost everybody got to come back to 40. Right. And the workers aren't really happy about it because they're, they're taking home a lot less money. I wonder how piece rate figures into the mm -hmm. the whole calculus too, because regular grain beans piece they piece rate, and it can't be less than minimum wage. No, it can't be. One worker made thirty one dollars an hour picking beans. Yeah, wow, by the bushel. But I also think second, besides CISA, is we start trying to negotiate better prices with grocery stores. We we. we need to come together with us. We're the only industry that doesn't control our market. Why? But you you need to do that on a nationwide. Right. Sure, but we got to start something. Yeah. Else. I'd well, say you start with if they're gonna call it local, it's gotta be local. Yeah, well, I mean, I start with regulating you're 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 in here you you're selling in Massachusetts. So you gotta pay these guys a premium. Yeah. Like I said, if it's available in Massachusetts, we have to buy it from Massachusetts. So that's a legislative thing. And the legislature says you're going to call it local. You got to put the farm name down in the town for, for, to identify it, to, to, to right. create yeah. the fact that it is local. Otherwise, right. Hey, I've, I've talked to a couple of supermarket chains recently this spring about promoting potted herbs in the springtime. Mm -hmm. I knock a couple of bucks off. They build bigger displays. Everybody's yeah. happy, right? Yeah. <clears throat> they don't have the people in the stores to no. even build the displays. I mean, yeah. you know, I mean, changing the signs. I, I made a pre-COVID Whole Foods was doing this, like ranking every farm thing, whether you were good, better and best. Oh, yeah. and we didn't keep bees to help pollinate our kale and lettuce crop. So we were not able to achieve the highest grade. So I drove around to a bunch of Connecticut Whole food stores and some of these too. And I found our packaged basil and I wanted to see, was it marked, you know, good organic? Ours was organically grown. We were not the worst. <laughs> we were good. We were not the best. And it was, I, I don't know if I ever saw it marked right. Of course not. Like it was marked all over the map. Conven uh, uh, highest rated conventional, lowest rated organic. I mean, it, it was just random. Yeah, and you right. could tell. There are people who are just going out with these signs. They didn't know I what it meant. I like, this logo, this logo sucks. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I just you know. put these, you know, it was like, you could tell that somebody just got handed 50 of these things. And right. they just, <laughs> right. let's do it quick. And I think you're really... If Eric, my neighbor, who's our other new member, yeah. was here tonight, he could tell you. He just told me this story. He's at a farmer's market, and this woman says to him, why don't you have asparagus? 
And he says, well, it's March. And she says, well, it's in the grocery store. Yeah. I mean, that's who you're trying to educate. Yeah. Hey, and that's not a, a light switch flip. <laughs> I mean, my people mom, are. My mom, <laughs> by Wally starting out squash, she saves the stickers to show me that she's buying my butternut squash. <laughs> no, I'm my mom about this. <laughs> yeah, but like all winter, Mexican asparagus has been crazy cheap. Yes, it's right. like forty dollars. I know. What's it leaving Mexico for? $10? It's got to be less than that. It's like two two fifty a bunch in the store. I've seen it even cheaper. <laughs> oh, but it's a twenty eight pound box, yeah. and it's. Between thirty six and forty, that's delivered to Boston. How do you compete against stuff like that? Yeah, you can't. And a lot of people, when they're shopping, quite honestly, just look at the price. They well, yeah, really... they have to. That's. And then the other thing the chain stores are doing now is they like us to all use their label, because now we're totally. You can't sell yourself. Right. So if we ask for a dollar more, they just drop us, and nobody. Even notices because the label never changed. Right, right, right. Yeah. yeah, that's that's a bigger problem. That like all that stuff is not going to just change if we stomp our feet. No, it's not. You know, like it's. Well, I see. The other problem is we we haven't had a good growing season in three years. Right, and our customers have heard way too many times. <clears throat> I don't have that. This yep. week. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be out for two weeks. Yep. That feels under water right you become unreliable and they get phone calls every or emails every day from other people yeah trying to get in there yeah because i hear about it you must hear about right. it you can skip one delivery and you're done yeah you're only as good as your last delivery it's and how, how are you going to fill in with product from other farms with all this lack of clarity the food safety questions right exactly i think well I think I'm going to get going. All right. Well, thank you. <laughs> sure. Well, I think maybe if CISO could do something more along the line, like not even involving the labor part, of it, just leave that marriage out. But it seems to me, <laughs> thank you, Wally. Everything in its power in the public side to keep farmers farming in Massachusetts, and then they chop your legs off every single second they can, and that and and directly from Boston. Yeah, I mean, I would. I would really like to understand the, the federal state interaction right. here because I don't this, understand this, that. So right. I deal with this with this, so, USDA so. inspected beef. So right. every slaughterhouse has yeah. a so Massachusetts yeah. has the ability and used to inspect right. their own meat, right. but, but they, they don't do want to do it. They don't want to employ yeah. the people. Yeah. So they put some flunky in there from yeah. the feds, yeah. and that guy tells tells the kill floor whether my animal is over 20 or 30 months of age. Right. Then the spine has to come out because of mad cow, which of course I don't feed my cows other cows, right. so they can't get mad cow. <laughs> but if it goes to the butcher shop, then they can't hang it and age it because the spine's out. And they do a terrible job taking it out. But the person who's determining that has never been to vet school. They're a USDA inspector. They right. watch animals get killed all day long. Yep. It's not a great gig. <laughs> But like that person has my livelihood in their hands. It's yep. insane. I mean, really. Yep. And then USDA will be like, oh, do you want a grant for a barn here? We'll give you 500,000. But then we'll take all your money on the other end because we don't know what we're doing. It's yes. infuriating. Yes, I agree. USDA is a very big, I mean, it's a very big place. They do yeah. a lot of different things and a lot of them contradict each other. Right. I have been there right. for almost 35 years and I have never, ever, yeah. ever. Jim, Jim Cummings has rule. called me right. every day yep. for a month to ask what I grew this year, even though I reported everything to Greenfield. So mm -hmm. someone from USDA who has a job that doesn't need to exist, yeah. calling me, bothering me to ask if I grew cotton or peanuts or whatever, it's like, you know. <laughs> No, yes, but I well, how much hay do you have? I mean, tons. It's like, call the other, call Greenfield. They know everything. They know what color yep. my socks are. It's like, they know everything. I report everything in hand since I was 15 years old. Yep. I started running the farm. I mean, it's crazy. Mm -hmm.
But that guy, some old guy who's probably half retired and has a part time job, is just calling he's, me. He's a, an ag census enumerator. Right. But they don't do anything with the information. I could tell him I grew 100 it's, acres of cotton and he's going to record yeah, it. He, he has that in 10 other places. Yeah. You know what I mean? But that's it's but, insane. But this here, like Wally was talking about, is, is crazy because it's the Department of Labor enforcing a Massachusetts or law. Or maybe they're not. Maybe they're enforcing what they think is the federal law and and Wally's comparing it to this guidance that he got from the state that yeah, he should be except, you know listening to they, like, he doesn't even anything, know that Wally. they don't even know what they're doing right that's and, the problem and, how is that even legal it like can't, what, right so are they it's like they're trying to enforce a right. federal well that's what court? i feel like i don't i don't I, they haven't there told, is they no haven't federal told over time so it, that doesn't make sense either so i don't i just so, don't get it like which understandably because neither does he because they're not explaining it to him like no wonder does massachusetts can't. regulate this on its own this is guidance about the, the right. this is an, uh, the, and, uh, and the massachusetts well, law is yeah. different yeah. than yeah. federal law right. Right. there's yeah. no yeah. federal yeah. Law. Yeah. Yeah. anything yeah. that says fgl on sorry are there we heard of any other cases of like massachusetts initiated or less audits Right, well, that's I think that would have to come from a complaint, wouldn't it? Wouldn't you yeah, think? I would think. I don't know. Oh, yeah, so it's, it's not like the slaughterhouse that Mass said we don't want to deal with it. We'll give it to the feds. Yeah, so many hours, I guess, or is it? Or is it the same thing? Yeah. Like Massachusetts says, we have this law. Now the feds are going to enforce oh, our law. Or, we don't want to. The state people. doesn't want to get dirty on this. Like right. Just that. Right. Here, well, we don't want to staff people and right. have a whole other division. Yeah. Right. And yeah, yeah, yeah. That's like if, if you're a Massachusetts congressman, you're Jim McGovern, right? You have a constituent that's getting fined. God knows how much much money. You feel sorry for me. You're keeping track of that, right? And then you also know how many far, how many fines are being levied in your state. So somebody has that number. I don't know who it is. Oh, okay. but somebody's got that number. Right, and maybe they don't have it because they haven't determined it yet. Right, right. Because I mean, whoever they're in the I don't middle know what of he said when I was talking, whoever your constituent like, is is calling you on the right. phone daily, saying, "What are you doing for me?" Right, and eventually, I would think Jim McGovern's office would be able to get something out of it, or point. Neil, or whoever else. Right. At least clarification on what he's. Right. How much and what and why. Right. Sometimes making these calls and signing in on a sheet and getting on a list scares me. It's a little bit like sometimes our workers don't want to have their pictures taken and sign a sheet yeah. somewhere. You get on a list. It's like, well, <laughs> here's a list of farmers. Let's audit them. <laughs> right. Right. Damn, so, I you, wish I hadn't right. signed in there. It, it puts you on a short list. <laughs> yeah. That ha that so what is the next step? Like, is do should we contact like the govern or like is that something season like the season on like a line or? I mean, we can certainly talk to them, but it doesn't sound like they have an answer. Right. Um, right. So we'll even use them for the for the state. The rural liaison. The, the yeah, at the state level, like a. There's two feet. There's Ann Gobi, who used to be a senator in Central Mass, who has a rural mass position in the in Mara Healy's administration. And then there's someone whose name is like Chris Alavechi or something, who is also another rural liaison at the state level. So I think they could be good people to talk to. Um How about so, a commission. Yeah, definitely. <clears throat> yeah. The old the old one was not very good back in yeah, 2019. He, yeah, no, I think talking to Ashley would be yeah. like we listen yeah. to you. Yeah. Well, how about the um, what is the, the ad committee? <clears throat> the ad committee. Uh give them a shout and see if they could bump up price. Yeah, it's or, uh, or, that's or, or, kinda... or say here's here's the problem. We're not making enough money to be able to do this. Can you fix it? I'm texting right now. Uh, I'm, it'll be what <laughs> you <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I yeah, he I says it's all fixed. The problem is that you're not getting yeah. paid enough, right? But I also think it's hard to fix. Uh, I don't think yeah. they're going to fix it. I, I, yeah, I think, I think figuring out there's just too much food out there. Mm -hmm. uh, they're going to pay more for the owners, they're going to buy it cheaper someplace. Yeah. There has to be too much food out there uh, because is. if there isn't, then people are starving, and that's the problem, <laughs> right? 
people so are starving the anyway. So the government knows this. So the government should say, okay, well, we want Massachusetts farmers to stay in business. Yeah. We got to kick in. I agree. Right. Think of all the other dumb things they spend money on. Right. That's yeah, the way I always look I mean, at it. Yeah. They gave us twenty million. They spent twenty million on something that's way dumber every day. <laughs> yeah, I'm kidding about what they did this year for us. That yeah. like everybody else, like above and beyond, they right. put us all back in business. Yeah. Anybody right. who 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 needed it? What if we yep. had to uh, ask for a meeting with the commissioner, uh, so. the Whaley Ag Commission, as a way to uh, proceed uh, under our circumstances of being given around the around the horn of yeah. no concrete inter information. So well, let them know how confused we are with yeah. this decision. Right. And not know. just the commissioner, invite uh, the politicians too. Well, yeah, what, I if, think what if we got several place. town yeah. ag commissions mm -hmm. yeah. there you go. To, together to yep. get a meeting a good idea. somewhere? Seeing yeah. that. I mean, Wally's the head of the Hadley group, right? Which he says they the Hatfield group is good. Okay, uh, they're they're an active group. They've got we, as we, as we have You don't have to very active. You know, my sense is somehow it has sure. to get focused on get a couple. This is this is our this is our goddamn problem here. So from your vantage point, where should we go? Right. Where the go. commissioner is looking at this, and uh, but we all know it's, think it's a full legislative solution here. Yeah, but it it's going to be directed from somebody yeah. at that yeah. level right. that right. can say this is the place to start. Right. I mean, like the first thing is trying to understand like what is going wrong. What is going on? You know that's made this come down on Wally's head, and you know the question of what do you need to do to be within the mm -hmm. the problem is they don't know what they're doing, so they can't. Don't discount the role of big agriculture. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, they don't want small farms. Or no, no, and I mean, they can, they can comply with anything, and they can lead yeah. by complying with right. levels of food safety that they themselves invent, yeah. and then. Absolutely. Then you need to, if you're going to be on a level playing field, you know, yep. you need to step up to that level. Yes. And I, just, I, I don't know. I mean, I've always felt that our farm was too big to be small and too small to be big. Right. Like we sell, we're tiny, but we sell to the biggest, the biggest yeah. players, you know, in, in the country. And uh, yeah. I mean, Gone with a stroke, a click of a mouse. I was gonna say stroke of a pen, but yeah, click of, dating click. myself. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sure, I think we start with our commission, and then maybe bring in the politicians once we start getting some some ideas on paper of what we think things mean, or what they should mean, or how we start fixing this or addressing it, and then we call on politicians. Not that they care, but <clears throat> yeah, I think it, they could be good at at help crafting the solution or possible solutions once there's some progress. But I think sort of understanding what's going on to the best that we can would be helpful. Um, and I do think just the way McGovern's office can call, you know, can make some phone calls and maybe get some information that the commissioner's office might be able to do some of that. I don't know. Um, so then we understand it better. And then, then we understand better whether you can in fact comply or you can't comply because they're sort of shifting what they think is in compliance. Uh, and then you're thinking about, okay, do we do we propose some kind of compromise that changes the rules so that they're clear and we can comply with them and we can get legislative buy-in? When, when Brad Mitchell was there, you know, we had that meeting, mm -hmm. there, the people were there. They were the Department of Labor, right? And yeah, there was three or four of them. It wasn't one or two. There was several of them that were focused on this. And um, but then it uh, it all evaporated. Right, COVID hit and then it stopped. Yeah, all the it talking stopped. stopped. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. That meeting we had at UMass, I thought, was a a step in the right direction. We're 
that that meeting we're talking about of a 55 an hour for overtime. And people were, you know, the Department of Labor and the politicians were, oh, that makes sense, that kind of makes sense. And, and then the COVID hit and, you know, and you know, all, the, all the conversations stopped. Yeah. I think we just got to get back to where we were in 2019 to get that conversation going again yeah. with all the players. And the players are the legislators. They're the ones yeah. who are going to tell the Department of Labor what to do. Right. We're not going to tell them. I think another, another uphill step here is you know most of the people in Massachusetts live in the eastern part of the state, and there's a lot of farms there that you know look very opulent. Somebody goes mm -hmm. to pick apples at a mm -hmm. hayride farm, and you know, and I mean, you know, there's just massive amounts of cash. Beautiful weekend in October, and everyone's perception is this farm must be doing fantastic, mm -hmm. you know, right? But you know, it's a, just a little different if you're not, and you know, I mean, those farms can get. I'm sure they had a terrible year this past year, you know. I, but mm -hmm. they would have rained every day, and you can't go on your beautiful hay ride. Right? But then, then they go to the Boston crop market, to pick up what they need, and <laughs> sell at the store, right? Yeah, right. So it was all it all works, but uh, the wholesale part is different. Yeah. So for the next meeting, would it be appropriate to? Ask Hatfield, Hadley, and maybe Sunderland Ag Commissions to, to to join us. Sure. I mean, I just think it should be if if something's going to happen, it the Waitley Agcom is not going to no jump on the the grandest steed and lead the charge. Um, I don't know, and I don't know who that is. Farm Bureau. I don't know that they do very much. You need somebody that's a legislative liaison that that knows mm -hmm. the people that has the connections that has the network already. You're gonna need it's this is no time to start paving the road. Yeah, I think we have. I mean, I I think the legislative delegations is very responsive, and a lot of I mean, a lot more farmers know them after last summer than they did before because right. there was flood tour after flood tour. Well, um, if we had half a dozen uh, towns ag commissions invite the town's farmers to come somewhere, maybe Wally's pretty generous with his space, PVGA is maybe a little small. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think I think we could find a space. I, I think it makes sense to check in with Ashley Randall and see what she, you know, if she's got her ear to the ground about this at all. Um, I'm sure she doesn't. I, yeah, I I'd, very, very, I'd be okay. very surprised if she did, but that's just my opinion. Yeah. I, I have no idea. Yeah. She yeah. just lives in Deerfield, so it's not like she's a long way from our corporate town. You know, the, the Northampton uh, AGCOM has a, has a very good group. Parsons uh, uh, is. Um, active on that ag commission. Uh, they had a program back in January that they have every year that it was a it was a very it was a very and it was a lot of people there, probably a hundred people. One at Smith Oak. Yes. Yeah, I wanted to go to that. <laughs> yeah. And, and so it was uh, it was just uh, different talks by different people of what they do and how they do it and there is a Massachusetts Commission of Ag Commissions. Right. I'm sure they do. <laughs> that made my the brain. Department, <laughs> the Department of Redundancy. Department. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but something like that, you know, the Montague Ag Commission, uh, what I, you know, the, Bob Missoula was on that for a while, but they, they just they couldn't agree on anything. And, yeah. and, they, and they wouldn't have had a conversation like this because of the laborers aren't getting enough money. So, you know what I mean? No. So, it, you know, it, it, some of them work, but it's, uh, but uh, with Northampton, Hadley, Hatfield, possibly Sunderland, I don't know anyone on the Sunderland I Ag Commission, but that's, it's all posted someplace. Right. Yeah. Whether uh, 
What's his name? Uh, has the store there in Sunderland Center. Oh, uh, Mike. 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 Yeah. Whether Mike is involved with that or not. But, or, I can ask I Mike who's on the Sunderland Ag Commission. He but the, yeah, commission of the commissions. Well, that's the my one, question. Be the one yeah. to kind I don't, of fool everybody. And there was one yeah. time I talked to somebody from another town five years ago, and I, I didn't get the sense that there was any real organization. Mm. I think, you know, letting... Um, I think the folks at MDAR would be concerned that farmers feel like we don't know how to track our hours and be in compliance with the rules for the growing season that's starting up right now. Like that's a, that's not, you know, that's a difficult position for you all to be in. Um, whether they'll feel like they know enough, you know, or can figure out enough to explain it, I don't know, but I think asking that, you know, could be a good starting point because that's sort of the immediate issue is like, what do you do this year? Um, so that you don't have these people showing up on your doorstep. Um, and then there's the issue of like, is there a bigger fix to make it work better? Uh, short of the really big fixes that we would like to see, but we don't have enough mechanics. Well, so that's... You can reach out to Ashley if that's a reasonable one next step. Well, yeah. you could certainly Start do that. Ball too, ball Doug. Um, but yeah, I, uh, I mean, I don't for... know if I'm going to organize a meeting. I, it, I, I guess I can say I'm probably not going to organize. I mean, if somebody wants to organize a meeting with other ag pumps or another group. But I just, I mean, the ag firms were advisory committees yeah. to select boards. That's what we did. Right. Yeah. I mean, and we can, as individuals, do whatever we want. Um, <clears throat> but. Yeah, I mean, ag firms can be, you know, can edge, can be an opportunity, provide opportunities to far, for farmers to network and like learn from each yeah. other yeah. and educate each other. And, and that could be what's happening. Here, but I I hear you saying like it's not something you're going to take on, and that seems totally understandable. Um, if it was something I knew how to do mm. and, and did, it, it's not what I do. I'm not going to pretend. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> I would agree. I would agree with you on that. <laughs> I, I wouldn't even know where to start. And that's if, another problem that we all have. Yeah, in a lot of us. I care, but I don't know what to do. No, I'm not going to pretend to do I'm going to do um, Maybe there's a Cracker Jack in one of the other ag comms that could lead the charge. I don't know. I don't if If Northampton is a really active group, maybe what we should do is say, hey, we want to hand this off to you. You know, I don't think uh, having been there and met, got to do several of those people that uh, they're in a lab position than this group just because of the numbers of shippers to have a clue. Mm -hmm. Oh, I see. Okay. So Hadley might I mean, be a, a yeah it, it, it's an active group. They they're in the community. And uh but that was the sense I got. I see. Yeah, I hear you. I hear what you're saying. But they there may be people who need clarity on overtime rules if they are primarily retail and maybe handling stuff from other farms. Well, I don't know. I don't excuse me. It seemed like you guys were all psyched up to do something and now you're taking ah. the wind out of the sails. <laughs> well, it's it's kind of confusing. Right? Well, so it's confusing if if the people from the legislature to come over here and, and tell you what to do. Say, here, here's our problem. You guys are our, our legislature people. Let's fix it. Yeah, I would like to I would like to see if I can understand it better, and then I'd be happy to think about next steps. And I do know how to organize meetings. So, you know, I could potentially do that, but I would like to understand if, I, if possible, what like 
What like get more information out of Wally first. Yeah, maybe get more information out of Wally or maybe it sounds like he doesn't like, know. What, I know. You know. Like he's yeah. got what, nothing. What, if they were just like, like, hey, in three years you're gonna have to pay a bunch of money. Yeah, right. we're not gonna we're tell not gonna you how much and why you have to do why so, yeah. you have to. Well, like if they're giving you know, how does that apply to other people? Because then right. I think we could say, okay, we're gonna have a meeting because we want to tell people here's what we know about how right. you can comply. Or Which we're gonna have a meeting the and say the there's no way yeah. you can comply, and so we need to figure out how to change the system. Right. Or we're gonna have a meeting to say something else. And so I feel like I can't commit to organizing a meeting without knowing what we're trying to do right. at it. So but I can try to find out some more information and see well, whether maybe in the meantime, would it just be the move to like just start calling people and ask if people are paying over time what their experiences are what else they're hearing and just kind of like put the bug in people who right. know us yeah it, it also sounded from what wally was saying in his comments like the cranberry growers have already kind of been a little further down the road than anybody else with this problem and have yeah. developed at least some sort of mm. strategy <clears throat> maybe that's a coordination. <clears throat> Well, if the commissioner understood that, she 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 could easily do that. That right, because they are truly one of the biggest co-ops in the state. You no, know, so and they're huge. Yeah. Hmm. What can you tell about the play of the crops? Yeah. Something cool is that. Something. Would it be safe to say that most people who have H two A guys like have heard of that or like know something's happening, like there's rumblings or no? Okay. Wow. Because it was Wally's yeah, thing was in the paper. Wally's thing was initially in the right. paper, wasn't it? Right. Yeah. I think it behind when this came out, because I yeah. think this was purported to be like you can mostly go as you've been going. Yeah. And, but that's clearly not what you know what's don't do what Chain did, yeah. do what you've been doing. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. You know, with the uh, as soon as you start peeling squash though, then you start getting into the you know the assembly line type yes, work sure. and well, that, yeah. that kind of makes a difference you know yeah yeah so you know i mean we we had uh, they were, they were trying to you know for uh, if you have a worker that drives your workers to a thing they have to get a higher pay rate now mm -hmm. and well i give my guys a car to drive you know only one of them has a license and, uh, you know, they use it to go shopping on their own and visit their friends if they want to. They're not supposed to, but they do. <laughs> and the things like that. And so it's, it's a benefit for them. But all of a sudden, now I got to pay them more to go out and have a good time. <laughs> so, and that's an H2A rule yeah. that if somebody's yeah, they got their extra that they, like... It's a new, because that's what they're going after is H2A. They're trying to, you know, make it, you know, uh, uh, different jobs for different pieces of rate, you know, and a driver for. I asked, so I, we, we were at the, uh, the Apple Council meeting. And we asked Joe about it, and he says, you know, he says there, there's kind of a rule. There's like over 25 and under 25 number of workers you have. And they'll, if you have a crew and a guy does that work, well, yeah, they see that. But if the labor department comes after you, and you're like me, I only have two guys, and they they, they uh, uh, tell you, well, they want to find you, we'll appeal it, you know, tell them, go, go, bring, tell them you want to go to court. Because the judge will look at it and throw it out. And that's the guidance I got from the Apple Council. Mm -hmm. Wow. <laughs> because you have two guys and not uh, two guys. Yeah, and they're not going to mess around with little stuff like me. Right. right. So, you know, I'll, I'll still have to go through, you know, all the bull, but it's not a big farm, it's a family yeah. operation. Yeah. Right. And they're, they're trying to stay away from What's that. To bring a family operation to court. Yeah, it doesn't look good. No. <laughs> I have quite a bit. Following there, so there'll be a lot of mad people out there, yeah. <laughs> right? But I mean, he's getting a car to go see his friends, like he's not well, supposed to. Most you, of you know what I'm saying, though? Like, but give a little, you, you give money. like that's the way right. the world I mean, and works. And suddenly, it's, it's a yeah. right. It's yeah, kind of yeah. yeah. It's, it's crazy. Yeah. 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 You know, when I had the pandemic, I had to find alternate housing for him. <laughs> So uh, for, for, you know, and that, that was kind of a, a mess, but was, what, what happened was the guys would leave there because they were bored being by themselves, but they go down to the camp anyway, you know, at the time. You know? Right. <laughs> okay, so that did a lot of good, you know. Right. Right. Well, that's the longest AGCOM meeting we've ever had. And we're, <laughs> we haven't even, by a lot. we haven't even started on the agenda, so.
um what do we want to do you know what you guys want to call it and i mean anything else you talk to ashley. Ashley, if you would i'll talk to yeah, ashley let's see what she's been hearing yeah let's see if there's other people complaining when i went down to try to figure out the stupid zoom um was wally saying there was something in an in an apple newsletter that's on this topic like is that a thing i should find and read you didn't you know oh he's mentioned to me that the uh the newsletter that would come out and nobody asked you about oh, oh, oh growers right yeah yeah I mean, I know they, yeah, they I mean, do I, that in recent. Yeah, I'll have to look for it. Right, I'm well, sure you, I still have it, but I can send it to you. Will you send it to me if it's yeah. relevant? Yeah, oh, I, okay. I think so. Right. I mean, I looked into it a little bit, but it was, I didn't read it all. Yeah. Okay. So, like, yeah. I can, hey, now, for you leave. Yeah, that was the just something to H2A say. employers, or which towns have the, the highest percentage of H2A workers in the area? Is it? Is it, is, yeah, is it the towns I'm thinking of, like here in the valley, or is it the, the apple growers or who? Apple, apple growers are all H2A. Okay, but as far as That's number all. of workers, would it be like here in the valley, Hadley, Hatfield, Sunderland, Waitley? Yeah. Yeah. Deerfield. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. that makes sense. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of farms so, in Eastern Rasky, H2A workers too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but there's kind of a, a concentration right in this. Yeah, there's yeah. a concentration of farms. Yeah. Right, with the number of H two A workers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, okay. We have eleven workers, and all of them are H two A. Yeah. Right. Whenever you know, get another H two A guy, you guys every year we lose another guy, mm -hmm. no local guy. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you don't have kids lining up to work in the farm? No. <laughs> no. Hey. <laughs> That's the seventy. You know, we used to have shit. Oh, no, shit. We used to drive yeah. the bus. Uh, hey, so, so I, I used to take the morning high school kids in the summer. So that was back, back in the 70s. Yeah. yeah. Right? Parents were like, you're not sitting around the house. Get out. Yeah. We used to have parents that made you up back in your summer. Right? Those days are gone. The old man gives them a 15 cents. Yeah, we'll see probably. you later. Yeah. You get a chance to go on. All right, let's let these guys get to work. You can go around. It's going to be pick your own this year. Pick your own this year. Pick your own wholesale tomato. I had a really good come to it someday. Okay, thanks, Al. So, that one is under the other one. What's going on? Because you listening listening to that meeting that was over in uh, at, at UMass, I I thought that clarified everything. And after they responded to it with an email to us, and they, you know. So, but but the only thing I can think is a, is the size of the farm, mm -hmm. you know, that they're they're trying to separate somehow. The size of the farm, mm -hmm. yeah, and and the assembly line type work, you know, <laughs> you know, right? Oh, you know, it's peeling squash. It, I mean, that's this but example. Then then I because they even mentioned that if you're washing the vegetables that come in to put in the cooler, you know, and you spend an hour doing it a day, your primary job is what you get paid for. And that, right. that's what they go yeah. by. And that's what, you know, that's what why I've been, we've been yeah. thinking right along. Yeah. But if they got a full-time guy working, well, then all of a sudden you get into that gray area and yeah. a little more, but I don't know, now everything's gray. <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, it makes sense. Like, yeah. well, I don't know if Wally was saying, but like if someone's like helping, helping someone at your stand, bring something to a little old lady's yeah. car, like he's got a clock out. And clock. Yeah. I mean, well, that, that, yeah, you know, that's we, we make sure we, we keep our, guys away from the stand they can right but they can bring stuff down to it but right you know they, to put it on the shelf and, and or bring stuff to their car we don't have it they don't yeah, do that it seems like thing. it's yeah. they were doing it like you yeah. say all the time but now they're, sure, getting, but... they're adding more on to it every time you right. go you know you know the way it sounds i don't know hmm. yeah it's not being a small farm is not being a small yeah. farm anymore. no you know, <laughs> you under like it's 10 crazy. guys or something you should just not have to you know, <laughs> No, I'm not saying not follow the rules, but like it should be a different, yeah, yeah, you know, there should you know, be tiers or something. Some of that food safety stuff cuts out of the certain right. threshold, yeah, right. See you, yeah. thanks for coming. Hey.
Thank you. Thank you. So the only the only other real important thing that I thought we should talk about, and it's take me two seconds, is um, I, you were pursuing the road signs. Um, it occurred to me that I have a very good friend who works at a shop that makes signs in Lowell, <laughs> and they make road signs. Mm -hmm. And I, he said, yeah, we generally wouldn't give an estimate without a design. Okay. But he said, I talked to somebody, and uh, six 30 by 36 aluminum road signs, single color printing, would be about uh, between a hundred and a quarter and 150 a piece. So okay. I requested a grand six at 150 is 900. So, and I'm sure Bob would do, he would do the, the design. Yeah. You know, I, you had some ideas. Yeah. Dave, you mentioned. I thought maybe like the milk bottle, but yeah, like way yeah. but not right. like, there you put go. something in the milk bottle, like a, yeah. a vegetable, a different kind yeah. of vegetable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 To say, you know, welcome to Waitley. This is a right to farm community. You know, every yeah. people identify Waitley with the bottle. But, uh, it makes it easy to spell Waitley, Waitley right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like the, the candle <laughs> place <laughs> there, that <laughs> was in Waitley. There, they, they had a bunch <laughs> of them printed up. Waitley. <laughs> One more time on the, the number six signs. At if, uh, he, it was a rough estimate of. 125 to 150 okay. per sign. Got it. Yeah. So anyway, I mean, let's is, start. Yeah, we, don't, we don't know that the money's been approved. I think it probably will. And I was looking to a lot of the signs too, you know, like you got the weekly uh, historical districts and stuff. There's yeah. another poll already. Yes. So we could put them on another poll mm -hmm. or something. Yeah, yeah I'm Even sure there's a speed a... limit poll or something. Actually, there's the bike lane. You have to get four feet to... Yeah. They're at the yeah. entry to every yeah. road in town now, so yeah. they could just yeah. right, yeah, put them right over those signs. Right. They're that not four feet in the road to give, so <laughs> but that, uh, I think that's you're gonna car or something, but yeah. Um, and when one I did actually, I had a quick conversation with Keith about it, and, and he said, Are they just gonna go on regular on existing posts? And I said, Yeah, it suits me, I don't yeah. know where the easier, yeah. yeah, and they can't go on Route 5. That's right. for a mice fan. Yeah, we're good. Right. <laughs> yeah. I right. get an extra one. <laughs> Open at my house, too. Yeah. <laughs> Good way around it. Yeah, we get to sell them. <laughs> okay. So, anyway, that's what I know about that. Um, and we can meet again in a month or seems like fourth Tuesday works. It's a little later in April. I don't know if there's going to be... Why don't we play it by ear? See if fourth anything comes in the... Uh, or 23rd. That would be April 23rd. Yeah, the April 23rd, I really hate to say this is not gonna work for me. <laughs> uh unfortunately. Well, could it be the could it be the Wednesday? Is do do Wednesdays ever work? Well, it it's a matter of can we get the Zoom support? Oh right. And is there another meeting? Oh uh, so yeah. Is right. Sorry. And for Tuesdays are so right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're already here. And just right. I know the I think the whether or not Zoom access had to be provided anymore was going it was to be discussed. Yep. That was mentioned. Level. That it could have been it, how many people it zoomed in? Be in April, Zero. <laughs> we Imagine have, that. We have one. A shock, I know. I don't think most people in town even know we have an ag commission. So, <laughs> yeah, we are the only people in the meeting. Sam is going through their house there. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, um, we're still meeting. Right now, you mean? Yeah. Yes. So, oh, okay. So, should we adjourn at seven fifty-two or? Sure. And we can APR. Anything going on with the APRs? I don't know of anything going on with APRs. The food system infrastructure grants are open. They're due in the beginning of May. So if you want a grant. Okay. I should have said that when all those other people were here. I forgot. Uh, is it still you can't sign up for it for beef or for poultry? That was the one. I think that's the one that's open right now that's due this Friday. 
that that's got all the same words. it's got all the same words in the name only they're rearranged it's what called it? resilient it's food system infrastructure instead yeah. of food system infrastructure yeah. or something like that does um, I have a grant writer no i mean yes okay. we have several people who write grants including me oh okay and we but but do you mean for farmers yeah we do not write grants for farmers, but we do a lot of reviewing of grants. Okay. So oh, and helping people think through their proposals and figure out what's okay. a fit and what's not a fit. So it's grant support. So we do grant support, but we don't do grant writing. Okay. From scratch. Uh, but yeah, I think that one is it's totally MDAR. open. It's MDAR. It's totally. I think they're happy to have livestock of all kinds. Okay. Yeah. Speaking of the, you know, the Ag Commission, Commission, you know, like whatever you want mm -hmm. to call it. Uh, from MDAR, I got a survey to do on Ag Commission. Oh, interesting. They asked if I was, they wanted to know who was our uh, our chairman. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't know. They what, what, what is his email and everything. And and the only other one on the list that I saw that they sent it out to was Bill O'Bear, me and him. Oh, I got one. Oh, you got one too? Yeah. yeah. I, I, I don't know if anybody know. else did. <laughs> I mean, I was even open. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if I got it. Probably with a junk file. <laughs> well, I reported your name anyways. You're That's fine. Right. <laughs> You're on the report. <laughs> yeah. You're on the list. Uh, yeah. Yeah. The, the way the Ag Commission has an email account that hasn't been checked in seven years. <laughs> <laughs> she know the password. <laughs> I'm going to pull that for <laughs> <laughs> Um, so I can't come on the 23rd, but you can meet without me. And if I find out anything from Ashley Randall, I can just write it up and send it to you. <clears throat> or I could come on the 30th. 30th, we could be call it two months less. <laughs> yeah. <April May>. right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, we normally don't meet after April anyway. But what I mean, I don't know. Okay, well, I don't know if there's a meeting happening here. Right. On that day, it the thirtieth. What which Tuesday is that? The fifth the, Tuesday. By the fifth. Yeah. All right, because I think the select board meets the second and fourth. Ah, uh, that makes sense. Okay. Um, well, the planning board would work as well. So why don't we just stay in touch on a next meeting time? I'm sorry. In general, do people think the thirtieth would work? Yeah. Okay. Because you you know how to do Zoom, right? So as long yeah, as but it's the it's the code that yeah, they 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 like send a code to you know the town email or her cell phone or something so cool doug's right like we need her yeah uh it's very annoying mm -hmm. <laughs> unless you want it to be zoom free yeah that would be good yeah, it's, be since easy. what good is it doing well, um, well are we adjourned yeah i, I end it. this yeah yeah yeah, yeah.